All right, so let's go ahead and move into Eclipse and uh, continue to use the same project as before. And again, we're going to do our same process of our copy paste programming. <laughs> so I'll take this uh, create student demo and I'll just copy it. Now I'll do another right click and I'll choose paste. And then for the name here, I'll just clear it out and I'll say query student demo. Take off the two at the end. All right, query student demo. And when I'm happy, I'll hit the OK button. All right, great. So now it should create a new file here for us. Create, I'm sorry, query student demo dot Java and double click it and expand the window. And then there we go. Cool. So I like, I like this approach because it has a lot of the stuff that we need to start with as far as bootstrapping. And then I just kind of clean, clean out the middle here. So I'll delete those lines there for creating a student. Also delete the lines for saving a student and uh, basically just have a start transaction and a commit transaction. That's it. That's where we should be at right now uh, with this file. Okay, so again, you know, I love comments, right? So I'm going to query the students and then actually display the students. So that's kind of the big game plan as far as what I want to do uh, in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and query the students. Um, so again, we um, set up our list of students that it's going to return as part of the query. So I'll say list student, the students equals. And then I use that session dot create query, very similar to what we saw in the slides. And then for the query here, I say from student. So again, we use the actual class name for the query and then we say dot list. That'll give us a list of those uh, objects and it'll return all that. Over on the left, I'll fix the uh, import statement for java.util.list. Okay, take care of that. And then there we go. So this is basically code that'll actually query the database using Hibernate and give us a list of all of the student objects. Okay, great. So now that I have the students, I want you to want to um, display them. So here I'll say uh, for student, temp student, colon, the students, simply iterating over that list. And I'll do a system out print line on each one of them. So again, I use my little trick here, sys out control space and then I can go ahead and print out the temp student. So that's basically the big work here for querying the database and printing out the students. So I use my session create query up top and then in the center here I use the for loop to print out the actual student. All right so let's go ahead and run this application. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, right click and choose run as and then run as a Java application. Our console window will pop up here and we should see some results at the bottom. Woohoo, good stuff. So check this out. Um, we have five students that were displayed, uh, Paul Wall, John, Mary, Bonita, and Daffy Duck. So this works out really good. We're successful in getting a list of all of the students from the database. So good job so far. But I have some more things that I want to play around with here. So what I like to do is make use of some of those other query examples that we saw in the slides. So what I like to do is query the students uh, and find all students whose last name is Doe. So here I'll set up the students equal and again I'll say session dot create query. And so here I'll say from student and now I'll make use of that where clause. So I'll say uh, where s dot last name equals doe. And I'll put doe in single quotes, double quotes to wrap everything up. Just need to fix my double quote here. Give me one second. Keyboard is not cooperating. dot list. Okay, there we go. All right, everything's lined up here in a semicolon. Okay, cool. So everything's good. So uh, from student where s dot last name equals doe dot list. So this will give me all the students whose last name equals doe. And then I also want to print out those students that I found. Now I already did some code up top for actually printing out the students. And I could copy paste, but actually what I'm going to do is just uh, make use of an eclipse trick. I'll refactor. 
So I'll take this code and I'll turn it into a method. So I simply highlight that for loop. I say refactor and I make use of this extract method. So it'll take that code and extract it as a method. For the method name, I'll call, I'll call it display students. So Eclipse will create a new method with that code in it and it'll pass in the appropriate params. I'll hit OK. And so now, voila, on line 33, that for loop was replaced with this display students. And the actual coding for that is later on in the file. And now I'll just do a copy paste on display students and I'll put that down on line 39 and uh, it'll print out the students. That's kind of cool. I like it. Again, use that sysout uh, control space trick here. And then I print out uh, the students uh, who have last name of Doe. And do some backslash ends to give me some cash returns just to have some white space here on the printout. And uh, this looks pretty good so far. So let's save this and quick highlight, right? Students last name equals Doe and then display students. Okay, I like it. Looks pretty good. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and run this application. So I'll just do a right click and I'll choose run as job application. You know the drill now. <laughs> I'll open up the console window, scroll down a bit. And this new section here at the bottom, that's what we just added. So students who have last name of Doe. And then again, there's only one student here, uh, John Doe, that matches and none of the others match. So we can see that our where clause worked um, as desired.